We are going to sing. Okay, so <clears throat> actually, let me. Um, so our chapter 27 is going to be about running a test for linearness if something is linear. And so we're going to be testing to see if we have slope or not. Because of that, we are going to completely review chapter 8 today. So today is 100% review, no new. But if we go through the songs, then that will kind of help us. So we're going to quickly go through those. We will be still interpret the slope, interpret the slope. So for every 1 increase in the x, the predicted y, it does this. Interpret the slope. Okay? Now, interpret the y-intercept. It happens when the x is 0. The predicted y is this. And it often does not make sense. And we'll see that actually on one of our problems today that it doesn't make sense. Okay, now, for correlation coefficient, that you get when you do your calculator. What letter is our correlation coefficient? A letter, little r. That little r does not mean residual. That little r means correlation coefficient, and that's there is a strong, there is a weak. Positive or negative linear correlation between x and y. Linear between x and y. Okay, so remember, these are your strong ones up here up top. Here's the ones in the middle, the moderate ones, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And then, of course, our weeks are the point zeros, point ones, point twos, and point threes. I mean, this is a general guideline. This is not fed steadfast because it, could, it varies based on the context of the problem. Okay, moving on. A coefficient of determination, the percent of variation that is found in the Y coefficient of determination, the percent of variation that is found in the y. It can be explained by the changes in the x, or it can be explained by the model itself. Oh, coefficient of determination, the percent of variation that is found in the y. Okay. Now, on this here, it can be explained by the changes in the x, or it can be explained by the model itself. That's the equation of the best fit line. Okay, so sometimes you'll see that on multiple choice problems, equation of the best fit lines. Okay, now, here is our linear model. And um, the, thing, the good thing about this is we finally get, in this unit, we get to this last little thing right here, so we'll talk about that here in a second. But linear model, yikes, is it linear? Listen, have you got a correlation coefficient? R is the strength of linearity. R squared is percent A variability, but can we tell from R? You don't know. Residual plot, you must check. Look at the residuals and see if there's a pattern. Statistical evidence only with the p-value. Now here is when we have a linear regression t-test. A linear regression test will give us a p-value and tell us if we have statistical evidence <laughs> of a linear relationship. That's where we are going to be going in this chapter. Does our linear regression test give us a p-value that gives us statistical evidence of a, p of a uh, linear relationship? Now, Here's an example if this is your residuals. Okay, these are our residuals. This is your equation of the line. And here are your, um, your, your actual pieces of data. Question, what is the sum of all of these uh, residuals above the line, all of these positive residuals and the negative residuals? What do those add up to be? Good, those residuals all add up to be zero. But, um, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead and start. Now, um, what does a, do we want a pattern in the residual plot or do we want no pattern in the residual plot? No pattern in the residual plot implies that a linear model is appropriate. Okay, good. And remember, x bar is the mean of x and y bar is the mean of y. And the mean, mean point is always on the line. 
on the line. So when you have a line and you got this stuff going on, the center of the x's and the y's is always going to be on that least squares regression line. Okay, next. Okay, residual wrap, R-A-P. Residuals R equals A minus P. This is not the residual, the R correlation coefficient, so don't get that confused with correlation coefficient. But residuals are actual Y minus predicted Y, and remember predicted Y, we have our prediction hat. Okay, <clears throat> suppose that you all go into a forest and you all randomly select 100 trees. Okay, so you all get your own random sample of 100 trees and you're going to see if there is a linear relationship between the age of the tree and the height of the tree. Okay, so when you all go get your data, are you all going to crunch out the numbers and get the same slope? Will you all have the same slope? No. Some are going to be a little steeper than others. Some will be a little less steep and so on. Um, but should they be somewhat in this vicinity, same vicinity of slope together? So, you know, same value type area range for slope. Should they be? Yes, they should be somewhat close to each other. This standard deviation of the slope gives us an indication of how far they can be off and be reasonable. Okay, because this is the average distance from the, you know, I guess technically the real slope that they should be. So, if you sample many times, I'd expect the slope you find of the relation between X and Y to vary this much on average over time. So your slopes are going to be varying if you get all your different samples your slopes will vary, on average, this much. And finally, our standard deviation of the residuals. See, here are our distances from the predicted. There's our residual. And a standard deviation of the residual would be what? The average distance that... What? The average amount that these actual y's vary from the predicted y. The average amount that the actual y, the actual y value point. There you go. Varies from what's predicted to become. Varies from the predicted y. Okay? So the average amount that the actual are varying from the predicted is that standard deviation of your residuals. Okay, so there are all the songs. Let's now put this into action with the problem. And so I want you to go into your calculator, put that in to your stat edit, and calculate your equation of the line. So let me give you a few moments to do that. So the first thing that I want us to talk about is, did you get the R and the R squared to show up in your calculator? That's the first thing that we need to address. Did you just get the equation of the line, or did you get those other diagnostics? Okay, so you need to know how to fix it if you don't get those. Here's how you do it. If you do not get those, you have two ways. One is, if you have a more updated calculator, you can just go into the mode button, and you go down and look for this line that says stat diagnostics. So stat diagnostics is what you want to be turned on in order for it to give you your R and your R squared. Okay? So if it's not showing up, go turn that on and recalculate. Recalculate. Okay, so now for older um, operating systems, you then have to go to the catalog. So if you press second and then zero, second and then zero, you will get to the catalog. And you can go down to the letter D's in the alphabetical order and find diagnostics on and then turn that on. So that's how you do that. Okay, so new and old. There's how you turn your diagnostics on so that you get your R and your R squared. Any questions there? Okay. All right. 
So we're going to start kind of with basic ideas and then go into the more in depth. So the first is, is there a linear relationship between student population and quarterly sales? What might be the very first thing that we look at to just give a quick indicator if it's looking like it could be linear? What do we think? Good. That would be the first thing that I would just be, I would glance at. So my R value appears to be strong. So there's my first indicator that I'm on the right track to linearity. So now I want us to actually draw the data and sketch the data. And so we're going to just do a quick sketch of it with a label. So student population and sales, quarterly sales. <clears throat> and we're going to do that by looking at it in our calculator. So I'm going to refresh your memory on how to get this little graph to show up in your calculator. Okay, so let's go to our calculator. Do you know where our data is going to be or where, how we're going to look at that particular plot? It's, a, it's called a stat plot. So you need to go second y equals. So second y equals, go into the stat plot and hit enter and go into your stat plot and turn it on. Turn it on. Now, you want your X list to be where you put your X data, which was list one. You want your, L, or your Y list to be where you put your Y data, which was in probably in L2. And so now we're ready to look at this. Um, and so we want the calculator to automatically give us our correct window. And so we zoom stat. We zoom stat for it to give us the correct window. So zoom 9 is zoom stat. And so there that is. Now you may not have that line going through there. I went and manually put this equation of the line from here, y equals 5x plus 60. I went and put that into my y equals. So go and look at your y equals and put in there y equals 5x plus 60. Okay, so do that. It will help you draw it. So go put in y equals 5x plus 60. And then let's draw a picture of that graph. Oops. Everything's moving around instead of drawing. Here we go. And then, you know, I want you to sketch the dots like they look there because I can see if your dots look like they should and aren't just random. Okay. So, there they are. Those should look pretty close to each other. Okay. Alright, so what so what could, what should we say about that? Do we have a basic idea that this uh, a linear appears to be a good fit? Okay, so then that's what we're going to write. We're going to say yes, based on a strong R value, we have a strong R, and this picture tells me that linear appears to be a good fit. So this is just first glance basics of looking at it and seeing if we're on the right track to linearity. Okay, and plus we're practicing putting these things in our calculator and such. All right, so the next question is, what's the equation of the line? Determine the regression equation, and we're going to do that, of course, in context. So how would I write that in context? Predicted quarterly sales equals 5 times the student population plus 60. That's what my calculator, that's what the equation of the line was. Predicted quarterly sales equals 5 times the student population plus 60. Now, can you make a definitive statement, is the model a good fit for the data? That we're going to go now into. Can you tell from R? No, you don't know. Residual plot. You must check. Look at the residuals and see if there's a pattern. Okay? So let's do that. So let's recall in our calculator how to do that. 
Now I'm going to show you something that we used to do, and then I'm going to show you a better, like, shortcut way. We used to go and put our residuals into L3. So we'd go put on here, and then we'd go second, stat, paste in the residuals, and they would all show up. And then we would go and plot list 1 and list 3. Do you remember doing that? We would plot list 1, and then we would plot, plot list 3. And that's our residuals. But we can uh, eliminate that middleman. We can eliminate, if you don't really need to look at the specific residuals and you just want to graph them, in this Y list, I can actually put the word residual right there and not have to have put it into the L3. So I can just go into Y list, second stat, so do that. And then go down to where it says residuals, or resid, and there it is. So in my Y list, I typed in resid. So now I'm telling it. Now, if you haven't computed the equation of the line, this is no go. If you haven't computed the equation of the line, these residuals are going to be like from something else it's thinking of from yesterday or the day before, or, you know, maybe it's cleared and it's not thinking of anything at all. You have to have already done stat calc in red 4. So now let's look at it. How do I look at it? Zoom 9, you need a new window. It is a new window. So zoom stat, zoom 9, and there it is. So those are your residuals. How do we like that? Okay, what are you, what are you looking for? Is there a pattern? No, that's pretty good looking equal scatter. So we're going to draw that. It's not very much room here. Sorry about that. We're going to label it resid of the cells. This flat line is your equation of the line of best fits. And I'm going to draw those dots on either side of it. Okay. And explain what that what that means. Why did you just draw that residual plot there? Because I can say that what a little linear model is a good fit because of no pattern in the residual plot. Okay, so that's my explanation that I have evidence that a linear model is a good fit because there was no pattern in the residual plot. Okay, next, interpret the slope, interpret the slope, okay, interpret the slope, interpret the slope, interpret the slope. So how do we start that off? Okay, for every one increase in the, okay, student population. But you know what, though? I always like to go check my units. Come up here and check these units. And wow, what is the student population in terms of? In thousands. So it's not for every one increase, for every 1,000 increase in the students. Yep. In the student, in the stud population. <laughs> okay. For every 1,000 increase in the student population, the predicted quarterly sales, it does this. What do they do? What does that mean with the five being there? Good. They go up $5,000. Dollars for every 1,000 increase in the student population, the predicted quarterly sales goes up $5,000. Okay. Next, what is the value of the correlation coefficient? Okay, correlation coefficient. Which letter is that? R. So my R as told by your calculator, is 0.95. Uh, I don't have that listed there anymore. But it, when I ran it, it was 0.95. So what do I say about this? 
There is a strong, there is a weak. Positive or negative, linear. Correlation between X and Y. There is a strong, you might even say very strong, because it's up in the point nine fives. There's a very strong, positive or negative, linear. So positive, linear, don't forget that. Correlation between, yeah, student population and quarterly sales, linear. Between student population and quarterly sales, All right, is this all coming back to you? Remembering it? Good. Coefficient of determination. What's that letter? R squared. The percent of variation that is found in the Y. So R squared is 0.90. So that means about 90% of the variation, the percent of variation that is found in the, what's what, why? Quarterly sales. It can be explained by the changes in the X, can be explained by the changes in what? student population, or it could be explained by the model itself, so the equation of the line, the y equals 5x plus 60. All right, very good. Moving on. Next, we are wondering about predicting them and coming up with the residual and all that kind of stuff. So, predict the quarterly sales for a student population of 12,000 students. So I got my equation here. What am I going to put into the equation? 12, not 12,000, because it was in terms of thousands. So when I do that, that comes out to be 120, which essentially means $120,000. Okay, so that's what's predicted to happen. If I want to find the residual, residual RAP, R-A-P, residual R equals actual minus predicted. So the residual equals the actual Y minus the predicted Y. Which of those do we, which of those is the uh, 120,000? Okay, good. So the predicted sales is 120,000. What's the actual Y? Where do you get that? Whoa, 117, what the heck, where'd you get that? Uh-huh, good. I saw many of you flipping your page back to this page because this is the actual data that occurred. So that means you're looking at the 12 and seeing that it had $117,000 in sales. That's what actually happened that quarter. Okay, so we're going to come back over here. And so our actual was 117. So what is our residual? Negative $3,000. Now, I want you to think carefully about this question. Does the regression equation, so does the prediction line underpredict or overpredict at this point? Over the prediction is over what actually occurred. So, the pre and so if I was to draw a picture of this, see, I've got my prediction line. Where's the actual located, above or below the line? Actual is below because it had a residual of negative 3,000. So the predicted the equation 
over predicted what actually occurred. Okay, moving on. Should the data be transformed? And that actually, this, this idea of transforming is what we will be discussing in our next chapter, chapter 10. Um, that references what you do if you go, whoa, linear model is not appropriate because there's a pattern in the residual plot. So see, what do we have to say? We say linear is a good fit. So no, because we said linear is, linear is all good. You're good. You're good. You're good. SpongeBob, you're good. So, following me, tab. Okay, wait. So, here's now final thing of the day before I get you going on your assignment. Let's review reading a computer printout. Because so much of this is just straight up can you find it on there? You know, where's Waldo? Did you, can you locate what you're looking for? So, this is a um, computer printout for X, which is the length of steelhead trout, and Y, which is their weight of the steelhead trout. So we want to write the aggression, regression equation. The regression equation. So predicted weight equals something times the length plus something. So MX plus B. Okay, so go on a scavenger hunt and look at that computer printout. Print out. Look through all that data. Hmm. Lots of numbers, lots of numbers. Okay, can you find the numbers that are the slope and the y-intercept? Where are they? They're in a column that is titled what? Coefficient. Yes, this is the location of the numbers in the equation. Always. Please don't miss out on this. This is a straight up knowledge based question. Okay? This is a, if you didn't pay attention right now, you missed it, and I'm just like, huh, duh. Okay? Sorry. I'll be mad at you. So now the next thing is, how can I tell which one is the slope and which one is the y-intercept? We have a word that is told to us to be constant. What does a constant mean? It's constant. It is a plain number, no variable with it. Plain number, no variable. Therefore, what is it? The y-intercept. Plain number, no variable. That's your y-intercept. Length is your x variable, so therefore, that number that is with the length is the slope. So our equation of the line is 0.98 times the length minus 19.34. Now, interpret the y-intercept. It happens when that length is zero. The predicted weight is what? Negative 19.34. Interpret the y-intercept. It happens when the length is zero. The predicted weight is negative 19.34. And what do you have to say about that? It often does not make sense. So in this case, it doesn't make sense. It's, called, it's extrapolation. You're, you got this thing going out way outside the data. doesn't make sense. Okay? So there's a perfect case of where the y-intercept doesn't make sense. Okay, determine the value of the correlation coefficient. What letter is that? R. So can you find, so here's another scavenger hunt. Go looking down here. Scavenger hunt. What is the R? Ah, now they give us R squared. Hey, do not be tempted to use R squared adjusted. No. What are we going to do? We're going to say r is the square root of the r squared, and that is 0.988. Okay? Oh, now, ooh, I think I forgot to say this in every single of my other classes, and I just remembered it right now. Lucky you. 
How do I know if that R is positive or negative? How do I know if that R should be a positive or negative number? Look at the slope. If the slope's positive, R is positive. If the slope's negative, R is negative. So should that be a positive or negative R? Positive is good. Okay. Now, last problem. It's all about, do you know what they're saying in this question? And you know what? It is a definition. It's just kind of worded a little funky. So let's see if you can figure it out. What proportion of observed variation in weight can be explained by the model itself? Aha. Uh -huh. So when it says proportion, that's like the percent of variation that is found in the Y. It can be explained by the changes in the X, or it can be explained by the regression equation model itself. So what is it looking for? R squared, and that number is 97.7%. See? You knew it. You could find it. It was all about, did you know what they were asking for? So, done with that review. Hopefully that came pretty easy. We did all of that back in October. And um, here is your assignment, page three. So I want you guys to work through that for your homework, and that is it. You've got a solid 15 minutes. You can get through a good half of this or more.